How's it going? That's good, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. I didn't even do this. Good. Yeah, good. Good for you, man. Have a good one. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for stopping. Someone waving at me I hope that it's you But who else could it be? I guess it would be nice To belong in your arms I hope you feel the same way too So when you find 
going, sir? How's it going? I think I see a lot of artists around, and you're the second I've seen too much. Oh, really? Yeah. Where is someone painting over there? No, last week I saw one in uh, Williamsburg. In oh, Brooklyn. okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's not a lot around. I don't see too many myself. But when I'm due, I'm excited. And yeah, it's fun to go get out. and talk to them. Yeah. I enjoy being outside, especially on uh, this type of weather. It's just like, yeah, it's you can't amazing. beat it. So you paint? Yeah. You paint? yeah. I normally have my supplies, usually my acrylics and watercolor, just yep. for short durations, you know, just. I can't bring uh, oils on the boat, so I got to yeah. bring some water soluble. So. Yep. It's so fun, man, being a painter. It's, yeah. Yeah, I heard it's like everybody's dream. Uh, it was mine, too, when I got out of high school about moving here in New York and living yeah. a metropolitan life and yeah. being a starving artist for a while. Yeah. It's, it's funny because it's, a, it's a, a fun thing to do, but at the same time, I still miss, like, what I would call kind of more normal life. <laughs> oh, back in Savannah? Yeah, just back in like a normal city. Sometimes you miss things that you didn't think you were going to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that you just kind of take for granted. But um, it's, it's fun living here. It's just totally different. Glad to see you painting big, man. Not a lot of people paint big. They usually paint small. Yeah, you don't see a lot of people I don't know yeah, why either, because actually, it's easier for me to paint big than it is small. I started out small, and it takes me just as long to do a big painting, sometimes even less, because you're not yeah. having to fight, you know, to to get those little dashes in there. I used to use the expensive paints. You yeah. Know, the Canyon being like twenty, thirty dollars. Yeah. But... I I paint so much now, and I use so much paint that yeah. I just use like the student grade and the hues and. Yeah. Uh, I think it's like all about consistency. So like if you just get used to that, yeah. I mean, I, I I use a lot of you use a lot of white when you're painting outside anyway. Yeah, that's so it's like you I, gotta use the lowest. Yeah, <laughs> and so it would just get too expensive, I think, to uh, buy like the the really expensive colors. Yeah, it's like Van Gogh. Van Gogh used the he couldn't afford anything, so he's the cheapest of the cheapest yeah. you can buy. And yeah, look at his painting, so yeah, millions. Exactly. I think you know. There's something to be said for having nice materials, but these days, even like, I mean, these are still Windsor Newton Winton, you know. Yeah. They're 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 just as they're they're just fine for what I'm trying to do here. You can do a bad painting with expensive paints and a good painting with cheap paints, is yeah. how I feel. So. Yeah, I got. I research all those uh, famous paintings and. Uh, yep. Like the scream. Yep. The got the artist. Uh, he painted that like 28 times. But his first painting that he did of it uh -huh. was the is the famous one. Oh, it was okay. the one he yeah. did in crown on yep. a brown paper. Okay. You know, and think about that on a brown paper on yeah. crown, just kind of googling it. Right. One of the most famous paintings and, in the world. Yeah, that was actually a sketch that he did just so he can yeah. uh, do oil paintings of it. And, uh huh. And the oil and paintings. That, that turned out to be. You couldn't lot. get anywhere anywhere close to as good as that what that was, huh? Yep, the sketch spoke more than his oil paintings yeah. did. I think that happens a lot, you know. Like that's why uh, painting outside and getting once I, you know, I don't take these home and work on them. Once they're done out here, they're done. Yeah. Because I find that if I get it home and fiddle with it. Um, it just loses something, and it's kind of that same thing. Have you heard the term uh, "values do all the work and color yeah. gets all the credit"? Yeah. I always keep that like number one in my head about. Yeah. Make sure the values are accurate. And with that, it's like I, I, for me, that's the same thing. I always do like a drawing first to try to lock in the values. Yeah. But some people, you know, like the real colorists, they actually don't go with that. And, they kind of reject that. You know, the colorist that, and stuff. Yeah, the colorist, which yeah. I, I wish I had enough patience to be like that, but um, I just like to kind of mess around with stuff and get stuff on there. And I see like the value in, in what they do too. And it just really like illustrates how like you, you just kind of gotta go with what you're comfortable with. Yeah. Because like for some people that is comfortable, right? Not not uh 
caring as much about the value and caring more about color shifts and things like that. And that, and that, that if, you, if you're good at that, that does a, a fine job of, of expressing something. I think it's a lot easier to, uh, to like care about value. Yeah. And if you're, if you're not like, if your eye isn't as, as experienced to be able to pick up a lot of those color shifts. I kind of like the, the happy medium between that, that, that those two types of philosophies, you know? And the main thing that I always try to remind myself when I'm out is just to, why I why I wanted to paint in the first place. Yeah. Like just number one thing is have fun, right? For me. They always say you want to see your painting before you paint it. You yeah. Get a good visual of it. If you're setting out to try to get get it to look like what you see out there, you're already behind. Yeah. It's like this is your world, right? And if it looks right in your world that you set up. You hear people say lemons of palette, you know, get the harmony yeah. and the mood and all. Within a limited palette, which if you paint landscapes, all you really need is ultramarine blue. <laughs> you you see my palette. That's I, I have like the ultra ultra limited palette. Um, burnt umber. I put a green on there. Any kind of green. This is olive green. Yeah. Ultramarine blue, vermilion because actually I, I feel like the cads are so intense yeah. that I kind of like ha the being able to play with this more and not have it stained kind of yeah vermilion is just about as good as cat. i like vermilion yeah um cat orange and lemon yellow and that's it yeah. that's like all i use and lemon yellow is a nice blue yellow yeah i've had like much more extensive palettes with like twice as many colors and it's funny i look back and maybe the color slightly uh Maybe the color is like slightly more more exact for, for like what's out there. But I feel like having a limited palette gives you a really, it's like you, you almost can't not have it be really harmonious yeah. because you're using all the colors to make every, every color you see. Yeah. And once again, just one of those things that's like a personal preference and some people don't agree. And that's just what I've found. Someone taking a picture. Uh, not be in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, usually I use two shades, a warm and a cool uh, blue, yellow, and red. Uh -huh. That's a classic palette. Yeah. This is impressionist did it. Yep. Except uh, Minois used black in his. And... Yeah. Well, even even uh, Monet used black when he first started. Yeah. And um, they would use it very sparingly, even even. With that, you know, with that said, like some of those paintings that you were gonna see at the Met, uh, Monet and Man, I don't want to see them are, so bad. Some of, <laughs> they have some of his like kind of more earlier ones where he did use black, and it doesn't really look like black. It's he, yeah. he'll use it. He used it as like blue a lot, you know, because if you get enough white in it, it, it yeah. people get a nice shade of blue. Yeah, they said ivory black's got a bluish to it. Yeah. So if you use that. A lot can... of like portrait artists use ivory black for blue eyes. Yeah. So even Daniel Green said the same thing about uh, yeah. using earth colors you can get. He just passed away. Did you see yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, and two of my favorite So did artists. Richard Schmidt. Did you see, you know him? Yeah. I used to have his books and videos. They're, they're like map. They're like living, living. Living uh, legends. Living legends. And oh, so did Chuck Close just passed away. You see that? I was sad to see uh, Richard yeah. Schmidt pass away because I, like way back, probably 20, over 20 years ago, I was in school and one of my professors introduced me to him. Oh yeah? So you met, yeah. the, you met the guy? I mean, uh, introduced me to his work. Uh, I, I wasn't lucky enough to, to meet him, but uh, you know that book that, that he put out like Alaprima. long ago, Alaprima, yeah. Yeah, Alaprima and too. It, it was $100 to buy back then. Which is like, that's a lot for a book, right? Yeah. And I, with the limited money I had at that time, I thought it was worth it to buy it. And I still have it in my, in my collection. Now they have all kinds of like collector's editions and stuff like that. Yeah. And even that part, they have part, a part two one that, that he did, which I've ne I, haven't, yeah. I haven't looked at or anything. But that, uh, that original one, it was just like, oh, this guy. I mean, that that is like one of the 
first books I read that really kind of, someone was really explaining this kind of, so many things in it nobody else talked about, you know. Yeah, I've seen his work, I felt he was a little too advanced for me to <laughs> I know. Well, try to get to I, I got frustrated. I made, you know, it had like all those color charts that you're yeah. supposed to make. I made all those color charts. I did everything. Yep. And uh, obviously you can see here, I don't paint like Richard Smith. Right? No. <laughs> it's pretty different. But I see like there is a definite value. And um, I read that book like you know, cover to cover. 20 times probably. <laughs> Yeah, just all the, uh, they always say, you just paint from the heart, you know, paint how you feel. Yeah. Don't try and, to copy and, others. And as much as uh, reading books about painting is good, nothing can beat just going and doing it and, and learning what's good for you. Yeah, a little island with like 9 million people on it. <laughs> I'm not used to seeing like so many people. <laughs> you ever read a Hawthorne book? Nathaniel Hawthorne? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, his book was pretty uh Yeah. Pretty One of my favorite books uh, along those lines is um, Robert Henry. Robert Henry. Henley? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, Henley. Henley. Um, yeah, he was a Henley. student of Hawthorne. Yeah. Well, I like... Um, yeah, Hawthorne. I mean, there's Henry Henchy. You know Henry Henchy? Henchy? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right, Henchy. I, uh, that's, I mean, that's the master colorist right there. Right? Yeah. And uh, I like all that type of stuff. I, um, some good, a good, like, modern person that teaches that is, you know, that Lois Graffel. Lois Graffel. And then um, Camille Priswadic. Pris you yep. know her name? Yeah, yeah, for the water. Yeah, yeah they she's kind of Californian. Yeah, but it's all from that that um, Kate Todd school, and uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne was like the one who started it. But then Henry Henchy really like took it to the to the next level. Yeah, to a colorist level. Yeah. Yeah, for Swadik was was sitting there questioning. She's been questioned so much when people are like, "Do you really see those colors?" <laughs> yeah. She'll see this, and she'll paint like a purple tree uh, and a pink yeah. tree, and because you know they always talk about like if you train your eye enough, you see those colors. And to some extent, I get it. I've, I've not, I haven't really done those block studies and you know all that stuff that they yeah. say is like very important to do. I just don't have time because if I go out to paint, I kind of just want to actually do a painting at this point. I'm a junkie for learning about styles and art and stuff like that. So I went to school for art, but I definitely learned just as much on my own Yeah. as what any class taught me. I, I think that if you really want to be a, a painter, you know, you can learn a lot from, from taking classes and stuff like that, but Going out and doing it is, is just teaches you so much, right? Yeah, it's just all about practice. Because a lot of things like that, that I've heard from other artists, I've been I've been like, yeah, I don't really know what they're talking about. And then when I'm out here, some, sometimes yeah. it's like, oh, I see what they meant now from doing it on my own. Yeah, it's repetition, just practice, practice, yeah. practice. You just learn from, do, from making mistakes and having small victories and... They say you learn too by teaching. Well, they say you learn you learn a lot too teaching people, yep. but I don't. Yeah. I just never made the time to teach anybody. But yeah, I'll let you get going, man. I want to slow you down. Okay. Well, enjoy the rest so, of your trip, and uh, thanks for stopping. Yeah, thanks for talking, man. I, the other girl shoot me away. <laughs> <laughs> nah, never. Always, so, I always like talking to people about art. She was like, I'm so busy. I got, she was like, I'm very busy. I need to get this done. I'm like, oh, oh okay. Okay, yeah. She even had uh, uh, earmuffs on, too. Yeah. Like, a lot of people do that as like a way of insulating themselves. But to me, part of uh, the scene that I'm painting here is having the conversations with people who walk by. Yeah, you end you up know? capturing that, that moment. That adds to it, I yeah. think.
because that's what what was going on and it'd be it's just personal preference i don't disagree with if that's how you are if you'd rather you know insulate yourself and be in your own that's like a different philosophy all right woody well you have a good one man you too i'll see you around hopefully uh... yeah what, what was your name again jerry jerry nice to yeah, meet you that... thanks for stopping by yeah. and uh good luck with all of uh, your painting and uh, everything else okay yeah you too man yeah. i hope you get some big sales here soon <laughs> That would be nice. I know you showed me your affection, but I was looking for perfection. So I moved on and on and on to someone new, as if no one knew what I was going through. I know you think I'm just pretending And that I can't rewrite the ending But to move on and on and on to someone Isn't how you find the one that I am through We're playing Thank you. Ooh, Appreciate it. it. Got the shadows down pat. Appreciate Gosh. it. Thank you so much. I've been watching Bob Ross videos, but I don't have the like. I'm just getting up the courage where I might go and buy the canvas because yeah. I'm like, oh, I can do that. Yeah, that's uh, I, that's how I actually got the courage. I was a lot. I was young. I, yeah. I watched Bob Ross when I was like you know, 10, 11, 12. Me too. Exactly. And, just, uh, he makes you feel like you can do it. Yep. Yeah, I have a YouTube channel, and I have one video um, out there where I dress up as Bob Ross and go, come out here and paint. Okay. Uh, at Bethesda Fountain. Nice. Yeah, there's a guy on, uh, I think his name is James Gurney, also yeah, on YouTube. I know him. You know him, the watercolor guy. Yeah, he and my father both went to the same high school oh, out okay. in California, Palo oh, Alto yeah. Coverly High School. It was closed yeah. like 30 years before I was born, but yeah, he's a big YouTuber. Yeah, guy. yeah, he... probably one of the has one of the biggest uh, painting channels. You I match the color perfectly with the sun and everything. That's Thank crazy. You. Appreciate it. That's that's what scares me is I'm not sure I have the eye to do that. I'm a photographer yeah. and I, I can look at something and say like, oh, the the way the light and the dark yeah. there with that arch on the tree, you yeah. got to take a photo. But 
I think the thing to do, the, the hardest thing is not being scared to mess up. Yeah. And just like, you know, uh, think of it as you were probably taking photographs before there were digital cameras, right? Yeah. Well, when digital cameras came around, it probably opened things up. You're not worried about like wasting film and stuff like that. Yeah, um, it's true. I mean, think about just trying to let go of messing up and saying just, just doing it is the win. Yeah, and, it's kind uh, of ironic you should say that because I always taught people, don't let the fact with digital that you can mess up, don't do not do that. Turn off the preview <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and pretend you'll well, get 24 that's, shots. That's good too though because right. it takes you back to when when you used to treasure each Yeah, exactly. Each you got 24 times to get yeah, it right and then yeah. you're in the dark room until yeah. tomorrow morning. So I guess you could look at both things from, from different points of view. Yeah. But what I would say is just like, I mean... You, I, I, I've done hundreds and hundreds of paintings and I'm still scared to mess up. Yeah. And it's, you just have to consciously okay, say, so it's like I'm it not going to care. Else. You're never going to like your own work. You're always going to be a perfectionist. I get it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thanks Thank for you, stopping. Sir. I love the vision. Have a good one. You as well. Flying all around So far